Good Hello, morning. everybody. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for Coffee with the Collective. We're so excited this morning because we are introducing to you the wonderful Mary Mormon from Push to Gold. She is a life coach and health coach, and we're so excited to get to know her a little better. Thank you for being here, Mary. We so appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Yay. thank you. Yes, Mary, we're so grateful to have you here. It's so good to see you and interview you. And um, I just am continuously inspired by the amazing people that we get to introduce to the collective and hearing their stories and hearing what it is that they have to offer within their business. And I just am so thrilled to have you here and introduce you to the collective. I myself have worked with Mary. Um, so it's just so cool to have you here and just to share also, um, you know, your commitment to your peeps and you're just so invested um, and you really have this gentleness and this um, care for your people and it just shines through. So I wanted to just share that with everybody and with you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, but Mary, obviously I know what you do. Not everybody knows what Push to Gold is. Do you want to share with us um, who you are, what you do, and a little bit more about your business? Sure. Thank you. So, um, Mary Mormon, I, I've, I've decided to concentrate on health because it's your first wealth and it's the hardest to get back if you lose. So let's try and maintain that. If you do slip a little bit or you do end up getting a little bit overweight, then we can work on that. And that's where I concentrate on. I concentrate on women that are wanting to lose weight and they're sick and tired of the deprivation of diets and hating their life. And if I put them on a diet, they're going to hate me. And <laughs> Not pick up the phone <laughs> when you're calling. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I changed the thought patterns that people have so that they can eat what they're wanting to eat, but they're eating on purpose. So you can still like have that. a little bit of chocolate or a little bit of baking during Christmas and you're not hating life. You're not feeling deprived. You're feeling fulfilled, but eating towards your goal and you'll have a little bit rather than for me, eight Lindor chocolates in one sitting. Right. Legit. That's a thing. It happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting. I love um, what you have to say, Mary, about like eating, like with purpose, right? Having intention behind it. Um, and I think one of the things that really stood out for me when I was working with you is even just asking like, oh, why? Why do I feel like I need this thing right now? Is it because like, I really think it's going to benefit me or is it like an emotion that's driving that? So it's really interesting just to have that moment to stop and think and like, hmm, is this visual? Like, why do I need this candy bar? Um, and not to have shame around it, but just to be curious about, you know, the, um, the driving force behind it. I found that really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's important not to have a negative on, on your cravings, but to have a curiosity and learn from it rather than, Oh, I'm, I'm so bad because I want a chocolate. Well, no, what's happening. Why, why do you want a chocolate? Right. Love it. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. I love that. I'm a nutritionist too. And so I've worked with people um, in different settings on their health and, you know, weight is obviously a big one. And yeah, I, I love that eating on purpose. I love that. It's, um, it's just really, and it's true. And a lot of the people that I meet who are kind of overeating or like Lindsay said, like emotionally eating are, they're not really, the awareness is not there. So I think it's brilliant. You know, it's like all of, you know, I met someone once it was like, yeah, it's weird. Like all of a sudden I'm like surrounded by candy wrappers and I don't know how I got here. You know, it's like, because it's just the lack of awareness are so turned off to it. And so I think it's great that that's your focus is it sounds like there's a lot of awareness around, you know, what you're eating and yeah, no, don't, you know, make yourself wrong for making those choices, but just be curious about, well, why are you making those choices? And let's talk about that. I think that's great. That's awesome. That's right. That's right. I'm actually doing a, a series of videos right now on who are you when you're eating? Yeah. Oh, cool. But yesterday I was mind mindlessly sitting in front of the TV, curled up, just eating and not paying attention to what I was doing. Yeah, because we've all been there. Yeah, oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, those gentle reminders. Uh, so Mary, you know, you've um, answered some questions for us sort of behind the scenes, just so we can get an idea for who you are and, um, you know, what your experience has been. And I know you have um, a powerful personal story and I would love to hear um, your story and, you know, how that's brought you um, to even start Push to Gold in the first place. Thank you. So my story is I used to be fairly 
fit. I would do P90X and I had a very, very physical job. I was lifting 75 pounds plus consistently. And then my arm went to sleep. The pins and needles, oh my gosh, that hurts so much, but it stayed asleep for three months. Uh, for one month, I did massage therapy two or three times a week. And then I went to my doctor who sent me to physio. I did physio for two months, twice a week, and nothing was helping. And then I found a chiropractor and he said, I can help you. And I didn't want a chiropractor because I was scared. Um, but yeah, a week and a half later, on my third visit, my arm woke up and I wasn't allowed to carry 10 pounds anymore. I wasn't allowed to carry a purse. So a jug of milk was my maximum. Oh my gosh. So um, I don't smoke. I, I don't do any drugs. Like it takes a lot for me to take a Tylenol. And um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't work out. That was my outlet before. So I ate sugar, a lot of sugar. And then I ended up um, doing some promo shots. And that is my... Wow. wow, that is such a difference, Mary. Yeah. Wow, good for you. And so this is you, yeah, just going through your own journey of this is where I am. I have these sugar cravings. And, and this um, picture of you on the right is more like that's your current your current physique and yeah wow so that must have been like a process that was a really long process thank you i i tried different diets and deprivation and and that's why i know you'll hate me and you'll hate life if yeah. you're on deprivation um i even Cranky. tried yeah i even tried keto and with keto actually um you need to be very specific with keto or at least i do because everybody's everybody's body is different of course so for me I lost a bunch of hair when I was on keto and I love my hair so that yeah. was so beautiful oh my yeah, gosh <laughs> thank you so um I I learned the process proper process and so now I, I'm maintaining and this is what is this three years later good for you oh good for you sweetie you. it's the last wife <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, um, it takes commitment, you know, and, and I can appreciate that, you know, there's ups and there's downs and there's times that you want to throw in the towel or, you know, you try something like you say the keto and then, and then you just feel defeated, right? You haven't found that sweet spot or the thing that really resonates with you that keeps you motivated. And what I really appreciated with what you had shared with us behind the scenes is that, you know, it's not making these big colossal changes. It's making these small little incremental changes right those are the ones that last and those are the ones that make the impact um, over time the the phrase that i really love that i use often is small small hinges swing big doors oh wow. that's great i love it it's so true absolutely yeah yeah that's very, oh. very, that's very amazing that's, that's such an inspiring story uh mary i think um I always find kind of like weight loss stories very inspiring because, you know, as Lindsay just said, like there are a lot of changes and, and there's a lot more, I think, um, emotional and like spiritual growth than there, than there even is maybe like phys physically or like the, you know, it's not just as simple as like, let's, you know, work out more and eat less. It's not as simple as that because like you say, a lot of it, there's underlying mindsets and beliefs and things that we don't necessarily always think about or have the people to help support us in that. And I, I think, um, yeah, we've all been there where, you know, just having that awareness around food and um, yeah, good for you. And I mean, it sounds like, I tell me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you're this process too. You weren't really allowed to work out too much at all. So no, not at all. Wasn't, <clears throat> right. I have a spinal injury. So right. working out, running was out of the question. Swimming was out of the question. I couldn't lift anything. I couldn't do any push-ups. So it was mostly lifestyle that, that created that change. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, I think that's so inspiring for our viewers or anybody who's, um, you know, 
who decided that they can't lose weight because they don't have that uh, mobility, right? That they have those yeah. limitations, whatever their circumstance might be, um, you know, whether that be like a knee injury, they're waiting for surgery, like just those kinds of parts and pieces. And I think this is really inspiring information because, you know, it doesn't have to be, this is the only way uh, for, you know, an individual Absolutely. moving forward. Is that emotional eating? I'm just stuck like this. You know, I had my best years behind me kind of a thing, right? Like I think you're, you're giving hope and, um, and I love that even you openly share that it's without dieting, like you're not, we're not doing the deprivation route, you know, it's, I think it's a very, um, innovative new way of looking after ourselves. Right. And, and it's not practice as common. Well, you're so not, really cool. yeah, you're not even asking. And it doesn't sound like it's the, I was kind of pointing out the workout because I'm a body worker and I work with people with a lot of like mobility restrictions too. And so same thing. And I, I have some clients too, who struggle with weight and they, you know, struggle, you know, they like want to get to the gym or they are like, Oh, I know I should be more active, but I can't because this and that injury restricts me. And so, um, yeah, you're getting me really excited to, to know that there's another way for those people who, you know, maybe needs to make some other changes, but you know, they can't be at the gym every day or they can't do that exercise because their body's just not in that place yet. So, you know, it's, yeah, that's really yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a key word because <laughs> <laughs> as as I progressed and yeah. as I was going through the the chiropractic work and the losing weight, I was able to start implementing some exercise. Of so course, that, that yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorite words is yet because I I uh, I remind myself and clients of that all the time that you're just not there yet. It doesn't mean never because sometimes I think when people think of something so far down the road it's like, oh, well, then I got to do all this to get there. It just feels very overwhelming and just so impossible. It's like, okay, like you said, Lindsay, just little tiny baby steps and amazing. I love that word. Yeah. Like it, it reminds somebody that you don't have to have all the answers right now and you don't right. have to have all the results tomorrow. Right. It's, <laughs> it's giving them permission. You know, and sometimes it's like, what's the easiest change you can make? Let's just be successful there, you know, and let's celebrate that. Um, <laughs> And Mary, I would, I would love to know, like, what inspires you? I mean, you have this beautiful story and, and your, your own limitations and the changes that you've had to make um, that have really just elevated you. But I'm, I'm curious when you're um, growing your business, push to gold and reaching out to new clients, like what inspires you to continuously uh, practice in your profession? Honestly, I inspire myself. Uh, I did a huge change. And uh, I just, I inspire myself and I want to inspire others and just keep them going. Yeah, that like, gave me goosebumps. That's so beautiful. And I think there's so much um, inner strength that we can project and share, you know, with our networks when yeah. we can look. And I, I love the statement where it's like, you know, we can connect the dots looking backwards and you really empowered yourself with your coaching certificates um, and you're preaching what you practice or you practice what you're preaching. Um, and then you're leading the way. You're like, Hey, come yeah. on, this is, this is a great option. You know, let me show you something different. Um, and I think that's really empowering. So thank you so much I, for sharing that. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I'm so glad that you, that you, you stand so strong in that, that I inspire myself. Cause it's, it, it also shows how much confidence you've gained, how strong you are, how uh, much, you know, you do feel and, and project that inner strength that Lindsay's talking about. Um, and yeah, you're giving so many people permission to be like, yeah, I did that. And that's something to be proud of. And it's not, um, you know, it's, um, I think people have, a, have an issue with that is like kind of admitting that they, they themselves, you know, have inspired them. So I'm really loving that you, you have confidence in that because you should, it's awesome. Absolutely. And so Mary, when we look at uh, the Good Place Collective, you know, we are a gathering of health and wellness professionals, whether that be physically, nutritionally, you know, building that self-confidence and self-esteem, um, you know, and, and we're a collaboration. We're all coming together. Um, but I'd love to hear from you. What is your definition of collaboration? Like, what does that mean to you to truly collaborate? Uh, fairly similar to what you've just said, we all gather together, we all have different expertise and, and different things that we can do. So together, we can really create this community to help as many people as we can in every different way. So I love that. I love that. Oh, it's so powerful. And even just chatting with you, Mary, I'm like, oh my gosh, like other chiropractors <laughs> would be a great person for you to connect with because of your story. And like, okay, now what? You know, for a chiropractor to give somebody the news to be like, 
this is your new current stage and we need to honor this, yeah. you know, and um, I'm also thinking of some other people that do nutrition and, and focus on a dietary, you know, like what a great combination that once you help people with the emotional side, you know, you can then help infuse them with like some dietary um, support also. And I, I just, it's so exciting. And so we'll chat a little bit more about that, that after. Um, but gosh, you know, we're just so grateful to have you here. It's just been so lovely. It has, Mary. I'm so glad that you, you've joined us um, and uh, so excited to introduce you to the collective and for everyone to, to kind of meet you this way. And uh, can you just uh, share really quickly here how the best place for people to reach you if someone uh, wants to reach out to you? Absolutely. So I am at Push to Gold, one word, um, on Facebook. And awesome. on Instagram, I am push underscore two underscore gold. Awesome. Thank you so much. So please, everybody, uh, reach out, say hi to Mary, introduce yourselves. Uh, we can't wait for you to meet Mary. She is awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being uh, our first interview of 2021 for the yes. Good Place Collective. Oh my gosh. Happy 2021, everyone. Yeah. Happy New Year. And thanks, everybody, for watching. We will see you all soon. Thank you. <laughs>